All right, so at this point, I've got a, uh, we've created a Pinterest business account. And very similar to when I talked last month, okay, we want to, we want now to get some followers. And I use the metaphor of, you know, catching fish. So if we want to catch fish, we have to cast a lure. Uh, we have to put bait. So right now we don't have very much bait. Our profile, is, in my case, is filled out okay. I need my picture. So as soon as I can, I want to add the picture to my company because that generic little red pin there shows people that you're brand new or maybe you're not serious or maybe you're a spam account. So you want to add your logo as soon as you can. What also will show people that I'm serious is actually having content. I have no content. and therefore I have no followers. <clears throat> so the next thing we'll talk about is building some content first and then trying to get more followers. This is part of the bait that we're putting. So wherever you're at, just to make sure, if you're not on the screen that I am, you can go back to your, your profile always by clicking on your, the name of your company on the top right. That will always take you to your profile. This is where I want to be at the moment. This is also where you would go if you want to log out. It's funny, but they make it kind of, not difficult, but they kind of hide the ability to log out because they don't want you to leave Pinterest. And here's how you log out if you need to. Back on your profile here, this little gear, this, this cog, this gear, click on that, and hidden inside there is log out. Don't log out. But I'm just saying that if you wanted to log out today at the end of the day, you have to go back to your profile here and then you've got log out. You don't see log out anywhere else. What you also see on this gear, this, this would answer the question from earlier, what, what you see when you click here is a couple of indications that you've got a business account. One of them is promoted pins and one of them is analytics. If you have a personal account, you might not have those. If you've got a business account, you would have those. And we'll look at both of those a little bit later. But analytics is the screen where we would look to see our statistics. How many visitors did I get? How many likes did I get? What are the demographics of them? And, and so forth. Like on Facebook Insights, like on Twitter Analytics, like on Google Plus Insights. And then promoted pins is related to paying some amount of money for your pins to be visible by more people. And nowadays, that's a very viable thing to do on social media. It is totally free to set up and to use, and, you, and it will work. But interestingly enough, it works a little bit better if you pay. So we won't have to pay, but uh, if you're interested in that, it, it's in there. And just like I talked about in Facebook, really nowadays the effective thing on Facebook is to pay, even as little as $1. I talked about that last time. So with Pinterest, we don't quite need to deal with payments just yet. It's the, the network is large enough that there's plenty of people, but not so large that we're going to get drowned out, like Facebook. And also, the current Pinterest algorithm is not like the Facebook algorithm, that it actively does not show your content to people, like Facebook currently does. We'll look at those later. But before we try to lay more of this foundation to get more of these fish, let's look for a moment at the settings of the profile. We looked at some settings on Facebook and on, and on Twitter because the defaults that we get are okay, but they may not be the best for you. So it's always a good idea to take a quick look at settings when you create an account or when you've had an account for a while. So click on that gear and then click on Edit Settings. We have several little fields to, to look at. There's the email address. If you want to change the email address to another account, you have that spot. If you want to change your password, there it is. What language are you going to use this in? And country, etc. Self-explanatory. There's the part to change your business type. So if you chose the wrong one or want to change it, there it is. Search privacy. I would not recommend to activate this. Currently, this says search privacy. No, we don't have search privacy on, which means that we are not hidden from the search engines. If we turn this on, it would hide us from the search engines, and it would say, well, you, this might take a few weeks to take effect, and then 
you will not be visible perhaps on search, on Google search. That's not good. I want to be still found on the search engine, so I don't recommend search privacy. Personalization. We sometimes show you promoted pins and recommendations based on your activity on Pinterest. Is it okay if we also show sites you visited recently or also info from our ad partners? Again, you're not if you put no on both of these, you're not saying don't show me ads. There's no way around ads. You're just saying what kind of ads to see. The default one of yes, info from our ad partners will show you promoted pins based on content that you might find interesting. Um, and that's sort of like Twitter, where once in a while you see a tweet that says promoted tweet about an account you didn't follow. There's no way around that either. So with Pinterest, you might see pins from accounts you're not following, but that's just part of Pinterest nowadays. So even if you put no on both, you'll still see some ads. You can decide what you want for these. The defaults are fine. Here at least, it doesn't do what the other ones did, the other networks, which were you would put a cookie in your browser, and based on what ve websites you visited, then you would see ads. So if I was looking at technology websites, the cookie would tell Pinterest, he's looking at technology stuff, show him promoted technology pins. At least that says off by default, in, unlike the other networks. You have the ability to search in Pinterest, and that, that saves in the history. You can clear that history. If you say, forget Pinterest, I'm going to go back to Twitter, you can turn off Pinterest. You can deactivate your Pinterest account. This screen here is very similar to the other screen that we were looking at to edit the profile. Scrolling. Here's notifications. You might want to look at these to see, to keep your inbox a little more tidy. Because just like I talked in uh, Facebook and Twitter, you have, you can get emails about your activity. And um, they might fill in your inbox. So what it's got, first of all, when you're on Pinterest, get notifications from everyone or only people you follow. Celebrities that have a million followers are going to get lots of notifications. This person liked your pin, this person replied to you, this, this, and that. Well, celebrities have turned on only people I follow, so they'll only get notifications from the connections they chose to make. Us, I would recommend keep it on get notifications from everyone, because that could be a potential new client. So I'll get a notification from anyone that interacts with me on Pinterest. The notification will appear on the top right corner here. This little speech bubble will become red and it'll have a number, I believe. And that'll tell you you've got two followers or three replies. I don't have any activity yet. I can get notifications by email. So when someone pins my pin, when someone likes my pin, when someone follows me or a board, I get an email as they happen. So you need to go in here and decide how much email you want. I kind of recommend turn this whole section off because you've got... Um, you're going to have either... you're either going to be logged in to the website and therefore you'll be getting your notifications there, or you'll be using the app there's an app for Android and iPhone and Windows Phone, you'll get the notification on the app. So if to get it double, also in your inbox, might be too much. You can leave it on and then decide after a little time which, which is better for you. If you turn it off, you get none of those except occasional emails about important legal stuff. Can't get out of that. What you could also do is say, okay, don't send me an email when I when I get a new like and a new follow, but notice it does have a little section here. We'll also let you know about price changes on your pins, stuff you might like, weekly inspiration. Some of these might be useful to you, such as Pinterest tips and how-tos. If you're new to Pinterest, they're going to send you emails once in a while that help you use Pinterest. So maybe turn them off, the top ones, but then some of these that you like, turn them on. As I said, you're going to start to be able to buy stuff from pins more. At the moment, you might run into a pin about a particular product, and it has the ability to buy now. Not everyone has that yet. 
or you're going to see some pins that say buy now. And you might not actually buy it at the moment, but you can get an alert when that has been, when that price has changed. Mm -hmm. So this is for yourself, not for your followers. Whatever you decide here, then I'm going to turn off all of these, but I, I will let it send me a how-to. Uh, I don't want price changes, whatever. So you can change it however you want. If you've got the app, you can have push notifications. Which ones would you like to receive on your phone? Again, if I'm getting them on my phone, I'll be up to date with it. Something that you don't want, you can turn it off. But I'll say, let it send me all my push notifications to my app on my phone. If you've got Google Chrome, you might also have an extra feature there for even more notifications. Again, it's just telling you what's going on in the network. Earlier, I did not choose to connect to, to Facebook, so there's no connection, or Twitter. You can connect with those, and what that will let you do is to log in with those networks, and also it'll alert you if people on those networks are on or have joined Pinterest. But what I will say about that is don't worry or don't plan too much on trying to connect with the people you already know. Because how sustainable is that of a business? If you've got a circle of 100 friends, are those 100 friends really going to be viable enough to be buying your product, to be subscribing to your newsletter, to be seeing your, your pins over and over about selling to them? So I don't recommend it that much to connect friends and family they're not probably going to be really your target audience. They might help you get the word out more for your business and such, but really we'll be talking about techniques that really reach out to the people that really care about your product. Yes? In the very beginning, uh, the very beginning section, there was a space where you filled in the, your business type. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that on my format. I, I set up this account three years ago or something. First of all, at the very top, does it say business account basics? Uh, no, it says account basics. Oh, okay. You have a personal account then. Mm -hmm. You'll need to convert it to business. During the break, we can do that. Okay. And so then at the very end, we've got apps. If you connected any, uh, any mobile apps or other websites that share information, it'll be listed here. If you made any changes here, you want to remember to click Save Changes at the bottom right. Okay, so now comes the time to start to add content. We'll see the, the three big ways to add content to Pinterest. Uh, we can do this a couple of ways. Again, uh, Pinterest is really about organization. Pinterest saw that in other networks people would add stuff and then it would just be a long stream of stuff. And then people would need to scroll and scroll and scroll to find your stuff. And Pinterest said, well, let's group things. Let's let people organize their content. So those are the pin boards. boards. Either you can create a board at the moment that you pin something, or you can create boards before you pin something. Either way works. Let's say, maybe, to help us think about how we're going to use Pinterest, let's take a moment to think about what kind of boards would work. So I've got Victor's Bakery. I'm going to share the baked goods that I sell. So I sell chocolate chip cookies, and I sell butter pecan cookies, and I sell birthday cakes and I sell uh, pecan pies, etc. So that gives me the idea that I can create boards for cookies, cakes, pies, birthdays, weddings. I can create these sort of folders to organize all my content. In the real world, I might have a folder that has my tax returns from 2012, and another folder that has my tax return stuff from 2015. So on each of those folders, I'm putting in the content related to that topic, those tax returns. Same thing on Pinterest. Create boards that relate to a particular topic. 
So right now, let's think about, if we don't have any boards, let's think about creating three to five boards, which we can always edit later. We can delete if we don't want them. But let's see how it works to create a board. So wherever you're at, if you don't see what I see, make sure you go back to your profile. You might already have some boards, so just wait for a moment. Or create another one, because you might not have created one recently. They change this all the time. So click Create Board. You've got fair, several fields to fill in. Name, such as places to go, recipes to make. Notice it suggested it in a way that is an active name. It wasn't just places. It was places to go. It wasn't just recipes. It was recipes to make. Think about creating boards that are more active than passive. I was going to make a board called Cookies. Actually, I'm going to make a board called Baking Cookies. Active. If you are in more of the active sense, or active tense, that uh, is more enticing to people because they have it in their minds. Maybe I'm looking for recipes, but actually I'm looking for recipes for Sunday night. You know, think of ways people could be searching for content. And if you uh, name it and organize it properly, it goes away toward helping you get found. Baking cookies. Or if I don't want to be in that sense, maybe I want to write, uh, you know, amazing cooking uh, cookie recipes. That's also good too. Then just recipes, just cookies, amazing cookie pictures, tasty cookie pictures. So don't think very narrowly. This is my board about cookies. This is my board about baking cookies. This is my board about cookie recipes. This is my board about tasty cookie pictures. Yes? How does the selection of your board name impact analytics, or does it at all? Like, you know, when you're looking for things to follow, it was um, hard for me to find some of the specific things. So if I had a creative name that didn't really imply, like, mine's going to be real estate, you know, ski, home, second property, should I just call it real estate or even a dash second home, or just call it active listings, or what would be the best way to have your board? For example, active listings, I would really want to target that a little bit more based on location. Okay. Active listings in Eastlake. Okay. Active is listings in Imperial Beach. So think about targeting it a little bit more specifically. Uh, and what were some other examples you said? Um, the properties will be ski homes, second ski. homes. It's not where people live. All yeah. Time. So ski homes. Uh, those would be second homes for like vacation. So yeah. maybe vacation ski homes. Okay. Thank you. Put it in like that. So right here, tasty cookies is what I'm going for. Description, then you have a little bit more space to write, again, in more detail what, what this is about. So here I can say uh, our, uh, our favorite um, homemade uh, cookies. Perfect for munching. You can think about in terms of what people might be searching for. Homemade, there's that keyword. Uh, I also, in my particular case, I'm putting a little humor, munching. And so that comes from understanding my brand. If you take the SEO class, a separate class that I teach, in there I talk about developing a brand strategy, a marketing strategy, and a company profile, which in there we talk about, OK, my company has a certain voice. Are we going to use? Um, very friendly uh, speech? Are we going to be a little bit more reserved? Obviously, I really wouldn't want friendly, fun speech if I was a lawyer, if I was a banker. I don't want to trust someone with my investments that is really talking like a surfer. So um, think about how your, your speech also uh, fits with your brand, your company, and your audience. category. And then there's a huge list here of where this could fit into. This can always be changed, of course, but this is partly to help you be found. Remember at the very beginning when we created the account and it asked, choose a few interests. This, this is related to that. So when new people sign up, and if you've chosen a good category here, your pins might show up. 
let's see. Do we have food? Yep, food and drink. Not everyone, not everyone um, will need the map. But let's say I've got a bakery on Main Street. So if I select map, when I add content, I'll be able to add it in a as a location. So Pinterest will then uh, create a map, perfect for people that are on mobile, that when they're browsing Pinterest and they see that tasty um, cookie, and then it's got a, the option to see the map, and they say, I'm only a mile away. Then it could guide people back over to the to the location. So obviously not everyone needs a location on their pins, but if you do, you can turn that on. And then on another screen, we'll see how we can actually uh, add it to a particular map to uh, get people in the real world to go to your location. You can have private boards, secret boards, that you only give certain people access to. The point of that is maybe you entice people, people follow you on Twitter, let's say, and then we can say, uh, follow our secret board on Pinterest for exclusive content. So that's a way to entice people to then follow you on, on Pinterest. If you've got 100 followers on Twitter, and now you're trying to build an, an audience on Pinterest, one way to do that is to tell people on Twitter, follow us on Pinterest, and here's why, this exclusive board for secrets, secret content. And then Pinterest doesn't quite have the the ability for multiple managers like Google Plus or Facebook. It has collaborators in that we can approve other people to add to a board so if I know other people's names or emails that are on Pinterest, not just random people, they have to have a Pinterest account. So I can add other people here. If they're on Pinterest, I'll be able to select them and click add and now they'll be able to add to that board sort of like managers uh, administrators it's collaborators if they are not on Pinterest they will get an email that says you've been invited to this board join Pinterest to contribute and if you have connections on Twitter you can then connect to them this way yes <coughs> Either way, they can have a personal profile or a business page. So I don't have any other collaborators I want to add at the moment, but I'm going to create this board and then I'll click Create. So it changed my screen here to focus on my particular board. I had chosen a map, so then I've got a place up there to add a place. It shows, this is the description, this is the name of the board, there's no pins currently and no followers. I can invite people again to add to the board. This board was created by me, Victor's Bakery. If I want to edit it again, I can edit board there, and it takes me back to this. And I've got delete. I've got these three dots with extra features. So if I want to send this board to people, this is through the private messaging system built into Pinterest. So if I want to share, I've got a business and let's say I've got a personal account and I've got friends on Pinterest I want to share this board with people on Pinterest that's found over here under the three dots this is how I can let people on Pinterest know that I have a connection with about this board I can share it to Facebook 
So I need to sign into Facebook and then I can post this to Facebook and get more people from Facebook to follow me on Pinterest. And we've got a widget which is a little bit of code that we can add to your website. So we can sort of uh, link or embed this board on your website. So to get people that come to your website to know about this pin board, we can embed this board over on your website. Can you show us what it looks like on the website? I don't have an example handy to show you, unfortunately, no. And then on the map, on the top, if you click on it, then you're able to, on the top right, if you click on it to expand it, then you can zoom in. Double click to zoom in. And then what we can do is we can place this board as in um, where are we actually located. So to zoom in a lot here. Let's say, I don't know, I'm over here on whatever street here, Kim Kim Sui, Kim Su Wei at a place. So this is going to um, be related to, we, we can't fully do it yet, this is related to adding a pin. So if I've got a photo of my cupcake and I want to attach it to this map, I have to have the photo to add. So I can't proceed from this point, it doesn't let me pin it. But I'm just showing you that we can attach, this is relatively new, we can add content on Pinterest that is attached to a location. And the point of that, again, is, well, if I'm selling those cupcakes at my store and someone sees it on Pinterest, I want them to come to the store. So we can't fully add this just yet. I don't have a... Um, I don't have anything to add yet. So I'm just going to close that and click the, the button again to close the map. Um, do you see a map at the top? If you don't see a map... All right, so that was one board. As I said, three to five boards. So in order to add another board, let's click back on the name of your profile. Let me go back now. Mine says I've got one board, Tasty Cookies. Again, let's add another one then. Do you see you've got a button that says Create Board? So I'm going to show some birthday cakes. I could call this birthday cakes, or I could call this... Um, if this is related to me selling, I could write buy birthday cakes. This doesn't activate any sort of buy feature. I'm just calling this buy birthday cakes because someone might be searching for buying birthday cakes or buy a birthday cake on Pinterest. Buy birthday cakes. We've got an extraordinary collection of amazing birthday cakes. Check out our sale. Check out our cakes. On sale. So the thing about Pinterest is, again, 
dialogue monologue. Last month we talked about are you going to use social media as a dialogue or as a monologue? So far, I'm setting myself up as a monologue in that I'm sharing stuff that is only mine from my company. I'm going to create that. And what I'm getting at is what I'm getting at is I can also create a board that doesn't have to focus only on my stuff. So I've got birthday cakes, and I can create a profile, I mean a board called Crazy Cakes. This is funny, crazy cakes we find, we find out there. So it's not always going to be my own content that I add to Pinterest. That's the monologue. I want to have a dialogue. And so I'm going to, once in a while, share other people's pins, so repin people's stuff, or maybe I find some cake on a Google search that is not mine at all, but I also share that. So one of the characters of Pinterest is that, very, very, very much about sharing, about you have something you're going to post a lot of your stuff, but you're also going to share other people's stuff. And so if it's always just about you, yourself, your business, that's not as effective on Pinterest. The character of Pinterest really might, is a lot more about here's something, here's someone else's, here's mine, here's theirs, sharing. And we want that. We want our stuff also to be shared like that. And again, you give what you get. So here I'm creating a board that some of the stuff on this board will be ours. Maybe we've got a crazy cake or two. But we're also going to actively look for crazy cakes on Pinterest or on Google or Bing or whatever and share to these boards to kind of keep it different and interesting and varied for our customers. If it's always the exact same thing, they're trying to sell me again, selling me something again, that's another sale. If you jazz it up with different kinds of content, different people's content, that helps you reach more of an audience and keep an audience as followers and engaged because you're not always just so laser focused. You vary things up. So, so far I've got those three. Remember I said three to five to start off with. You'll see quickly you start to add more, and that's fine. You can quickly add more boards, further organize, and um, build more of an audience. Question? Yeah, you, a minute ago you said you would learn search for crazy cakes out on Google. You can't just like click on a, some photo you find out on Google and on a, on a technical level, you can. You can find just about any picture and pin it to Pinterest on a technical level. Now then we get into on a legal level, should you? So I'm just talking at the moment that on a technical level you could. And then I'll talk about, well, is that image legal for you to do that? Are you violating copyright? And so forth. But we'll get to that. So I've got three boards so far. If you've got more than more than that, great. If you don't have all three yet, that's okay so far. So I've got some uh, some organizational units here. I've got some boards. I've got some places where I can start to pin stuff. So let's um, let's get practice here. Uh, quick show of hands. How many of you have a website right now? Okay. If you have a website, let me show you first how to add a pin from your website. If you don't have a website, no problem, just follow along and then I'll show you how to add pins in different ways. So uh, one of the effective ways is from your website. So just as an example, I really don't have a baking website, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of my one of my uh, one of my websites. So as I said I've got pmdinteractive.com 
we've got a blog there. I don't have any baking related blogs, but this will still apply. Let's say I've got something on my website that I want to share on Pinterest. I've got a couple of ways to do this. Um, let's say I'm going to go to my blog and I want to share the blog post about how to write a blog, part two. <clears throat> Depending on your website, Depending on your website, you might have built in the ability to share to the networks. So this one's got Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and more. For some reason, more is not popping up. But your website might have the ability to share directly to Pinterest already. You might have a pin it button like that. So if your site has that ability, this might be one of the fastest ways to do it. If you've got a pin it button, a Pinterest button, you can click and then it'll pop up to show you let's share. Let's say I don't have that. Let me come back to that. If your site doesn't have a pin it button, you can always do it this way. Was yeah. that the pin it that we were talking about earlier that so we'll get to later? No, this one is built into your website. But using the code that you... No, that one was for uh, embedding something from Pinterest onto your website, uh, oh. a, a preview of something on Pinterest. <laughs> So this pin it button is something that you set up on your website. But let's say I don't have a pin it button. So if I go over, if I go to read my actual blog post, what I mean is I'm going to get the, I want to open the particular link. this particular blog post. I'm going to click on it to view it completely. So if you don't have a pin it button, you always have this way. The address at the top, you can find whatever web address, you can copy that address. So let's share, let's say that what I want to do is ultimately I want to share this. Let's imagine that this is a recipe about a great birthday cake and I want to put that on Pinterest so I take I copy the address back on Pinterest at the bottom right corner I have a plus sign here this is to add a pin add something to Pinterest not a board but now add a pin actual content so I've copied the address from my website I go back to Pinterest and click on the plus symbol on the bottom right and it's gonna remind me why don't you add the Pinterest button to make this easier I'll do that soon. Not now. Not yet. If I ignore that for the moment, then it'll say, okay, would you like to upload a pin or pin from a website? We'll look at upload a pin, of course, but right now I want a pin from a website. Oh, again, it's going to remind me. Get the pin it button, it's faster. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna co I copy that address and I'm gonna paste it here. Click next. What Pinterest does then is it looks at that page, it analyzes it, and tries to find visual content, a picture or a video. And it may find more or less than you think. But here it's gonna pop up and it found the thumbnail that is in this blog post. Right there. I've got this picture. So Pinterest found that couple versions of it, I guess. And so I'm trying to share this recipe, but it's going to be attached to a picture on your page. So Pinterest is just going to analyze that page and find a bunch of pictures because you need to kind of use one as an anchor. I'm going to say this is my picture here. So okay, I'll select my picture. And it may or may not have been smart enough to also grab a description from your page. On mine it wasn't, so it shows no description. I'm going to add a description. Again, thinking about what people might be searching for. Um, 
called easy. Sugar cookie recipe. So imagine that's my recipe for sugar cookies. I'm writing something. I can write as much as I want, but really it's more about the visuals on Pinterest. So one short sentence that explains what that visual is is good. Um, you can add hashtags. Remember we talked about hashtags on Twitter. Hashtag yum. So then that will connect people my pin to a bunch of other pins that share that hashtag. So if someone is searching hashtag yum, my pin could show up. And then it's going to show me boards. These are the ones that exist. And again, we can create one on the spot. So this is going to fit into my tasty cookies board. If I've got lots of boards, I got search at the top. But this post from my blog on my website fits into Tasty Cookies, let's say. So I'm going to click pin it. You pinned it to the Tasty Cookies. It may pop up to say, Would you like to see it? Mine went away. But. Uh, what I'll do here just to show you, you don't have to go here yet, but if I go back to my, my, my profile there, it says I've got one pin. It's in the Tasty Cookies board. It took that thumbnail and it put it here. We can edit this later. But we've got now one pin on Pinterest. So if people were searching for tasty cookies, they might find this. If they were searching for cookie recipes, they might find this. Easy cookie recipes, they might find this. Whatever I wrote about this post. That's why it's important to, to name these things, because right now the Pinterest algorithm is not quite smart enough to really, to really serve, to really show people stuff based just on the picture. That's one of the biggest things that researchers are trying to to, to, to solve with, with computer technology. Can a computer look at a picture and really analyze what's in the picture? So that's why we still have to add descriptions, add the names of the board, add hashtags and such so that when people search up here on Pinterest, they might find your content. Yes? Sorry, I just got a little lost in that last thing. I, I did pin what I thought was my whole blog, but it's only pinning the photo from my blog. No, it's doing the same thing on mine. Okay. So now, for example, if I see that one picture from that blog, and if I click to actually view it, someone, let's say someone's browsing around, they come across this, and they see easy sugar cookie recipe, and it says pinned from PMD Interactive. So it's got a link back to the source, but then also if they click on it to, to fully view it, visit site. And that is going back to the actual blog post. So if I had 10 followers, or 100 followers, on their home screen, they would see all of these pins, they would see my pin, the picture of course, whatever I wrote here, and then where it came from. And then if, they re if that picture really catches their attention and they click the magnifying glass to view on it, they'll get the larger version of the picture, what we wrote here, a place for them to add a comment, there's the active hashtag, and maybe most importantly, right at the top, visit site. That's going to take them back to where it came from. It's going to take them back to the product page, to that blog post, to the sign-up screen. Or give them the ability to share on Facebook or send it to people within Pinterest as a private message or like it or repin it people have this ability. They see, they see something there and then they, they like it enough to show their followers so they would, pit, they would click the pin it button and then upon their uh, own profile they would be taking that 
link which is attached to that picture and sharing it to their own stuff I found online board or inspirational cookies board or bucket list. So when you have it written, Easy Sugar Cookie Recipe, where was it exactly where you entered that verbiage in? When I pinned it, it asked me for that. So when I when I was on this spot here, it was right there, add description. It may have filled itself in for you, or it didn't, but that's below the picture itself. So then it didn't fill it in for me, I filled it in. It might have filled it for you. You can edit it. Pinterest is also pretty smart because I pinned this and I've taught this class several times and I use this example and then on the right side it says more from PMD Interactive as you add your own stuff from your own website to Pinterest it'll, it'll know about that and collect it and then when people see that one pin they will also get a suggestion from other pins from your website could potentially give you more traffic so as you continue to add stuff from your website you get more of a presence on Pinterest and that presence could lead to more traffic to your website where I'm gonna sell that actual uh, cake so as other people as you encourage other people to pin it if you make it easy on your website for other people to pin it they then could also be your cheerleaders they could be your marketing team you're sharing they're sharing your stuff on their Pinterest, but then they're building your presence on Pinterest. So that's why you want to pin it button on your website. Are you going to show us how to do that? Pin a button on a website? No, because it really depends on the person's website. On some websites, we have to add a little bit of HTML code. On some websites, we have to use a plugin. On some websites, it's a lot harder, so individually during the lab time we can look at that. But because it varies with so many people, I can't quite show it for a whole class. If I go back to uh, my profile and click plus, again, I can keep adding content from my website that way. I've got another way as well. Let's say I don't have a website, but I still want to add my product content and such. You can do this if you'd like. Um, you can click back on that plus symbol. If you don't see the plus, go back to your uh, profile. But click on plus, and then we've got upload. So here's another way. This is a little bit more around the bend, but we can also do it this way. We have upload a pin. This is okay, choose an image. This assumes you've got an image on your desktop or on your My Pictures folder or someplace. So just to show you how this works, I'm going to upload a picture that is totally unrelated. We all have these uh, sample pictures on our computers here that we, can, that we can use just to learn this. You can do this if you want or not. But I'm going to click Choose Image. This is going to pop up a, a, an open window here. And if you scroll to the very top on the left menu here, we have some pictures, some sample pictures we can play with. You scroll all the way to the top and find the library called Pictures. Got sample pictures. Let's see, I'm going to upload this picture of this crazy cake. It's uh, got a koala. It's koala shaped. Uh, so I found this koala picture. I'm uploading it from my own computer. And so uh, I would be careful about this. I, I make this mistake in the beginning as well. Uh, I've got this picture and I want to add it to Crazy Cakes, but don't click that until you're ready to pin it. Because if you pin it right away, you're just gonna you're gonna forget to add a description. Then you're gonna have to go back to the pin to edit the pin to add the description. So I used to do this also. I would think, okay, I want to put it in this board, but whoops, it pins it as soon as you click pin. You don't want to do that yet. You want to add a description. So this one did not come from my website, therefore it has no automatic attribution. It has no link anywhere. 
it's just a picture. It's a dead end on Pinterest. So I could add here, uh, look at this crazy cake we made for Johnny's third birthday. Get your own crazy cake too. HTTP colon slash slash victorsbakery.com. I can add a link there. It didn't come from an actual website, but I can add a website there. If I know my website address, I can type it. If I have the full link to the whole, to the specific page, I can paste that in too. And what Pinterest will do is make that an active link. And so this is how you can upload content that maybe it's not on your website yet, but you can upload directly to Pinterest and still have a link back to your website. And I've got a board ready for that, Crazy Cakes. So again, it doesn't have to be always my content, it could be other people's content. I'm doing my content. Um, I'll show you other people's content in a moment, but um, this, is, uh, this relates to a particular board, Crazy Cakes. And so uh, now when I select Crazy Cakes, it'll pin it, so then it'll take me away from the screen. Once in a while you might also get examples about, well, if you like this, you might like that. Furry friends. Question. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of trying to direct your traffic, instead of just sending it to the home page of your website, would you just add like whatever page the crazy cakes are on? So you make exactly. a link very specific. You can make a very specific link. Um, you can add you can add a sp specific link. Yes, and then that'll go directly to whatever page you direct them to. So now, so far, I've got two pins, three boards. So we're going to take our second break in just a moment, but here's your task. Uh, we've got... Question? Question a little? Yeah, I just got lost on this. It's not working properly. Okay, uh, we're going to do help in just a moment. Let me finish my thought here. So uh, I'm saying three to five boards. And what I would recommend on those boards that you create you're going to see a preview of, of, of four pins. You might have a hundred pins on a board, but you're going to see a preview of four. What I recommend is to fill in each of those previews. That simply means add four pins or more to each board. So three times four, twelve. So here I'm going to try to add twelve pins. Uh, at least I want one pin per board. Empty boards are not useful to you. At least add one pin. So we're going to take a break, think about, or maybe even do it, trying to fill in these boards with four items. If you can only muster two, that's fine. But at least you should have one, so that you don't have an empty, weird-looking board like that. So we'll take one more break. It's 11.55. We'll be back at 12.05. Um, and we'll go on. If you need any help, call me over. <laughs>